Well, I think, geez, if you go back to to the old apartheid days, there's obviously the newspapers played a big part in in telling the world what was happening and what it was like and putting pressure on the government at the time. Um, and the, since then, the, the you know, newspaper is supposed to be the fourth estate and tell the world what's happening and tell society what's happening. Um, that has changed to some extent with um, the new media and digital happening and people getting their news from all over. Um, you don't have the great journalistic pieces and that of the past because today everybody's a journalist. Back then, I, I, I will tell you a story where I was at the Pretoria News and we had um, I think one black apprentice as a printer back in the 80s. Um, when I came to Cape Town, we had to get a permit in Cape Town to employ four black workers because Cape Town was a designated coloured area, you know. Um, and being in the media and meeting these people, we knew everybody was available, but legally we couldn't employ them. And that meant that for, for people from the different cultures, we were limited in what we could do for them. Um, that same black apprentice in Pretoria was later the production manager for us in Cape Town, okay? And he's now heading up one of the big print companies in South Africa. He's no longer with us, but he is the CEO of one of the big print companies. And that was, again, those, those are very, very unique story for back in those days. Today it's available for everybody. Um, and our editors today never got those opportunities, okay? Although today they're editing our papers, I think in Cape Town of Aziz and Anis and the Argus and the Cape Times, I've known those gentlemen for 20 odd, 30 years, okay? And, and sometimes they were treated as messages. Today they're editing newspapers, and that's fantastic. When, when Madiba took over, we were lucky to have an um, uh, 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 MD who, was, who, who knew him, and, and he came across the newspaper house for tea. Okay? <laughs> and the executives and staff members were drawn out of a hat to have Madiba, and I was lucky enough to do that. So um, I got a brief chat and had a cup of tea with Madiba. And, and that's something that sticks with you because, because of his humility, okay? And, and I suppose that, that'll stand out for me, just meeting the man who I didn't even know what he looked like before he came out of prison because we weren't allowed to see any pictures. Um, but there have also been many editors over the years and many people within the industry that took quite a few risks in the days of apartheid, um, disappeared and came back. Um, that, that, that were examples to me just in life and, and not necessarily as part of a career, but just in doing what you think is right at the right time. You know, the two outstanding for me was, was his humility and his ability to forgive. If somebody had incarcerated me for 25 years, I could have come out there being very bitter and very twisted and with a lot of hatred inside me. And that was not the man that came out there. And that is a type of miracle because, I mean, I don't think you get that example. Just look around the world and look at the dictators and look at the people that fought around the world for their countries. And when they took over, they changed dramatically. They became dictators. They took. He gave.